This video will demonstrate how to perform a spatial join using QGIS. The data being used for this demonstration are point data of dairies in Washington State and polygon data of watershed sub-basins that are at least partially within Washington State. A spatial join combines attribute data from two attribute tables into one table based on a spatial relationship between the features being joined. So in that respect, a spatial join is similar to an attribute join, but rather than combining attribute data based on a key field, a spatial relationship between the two features being joined is used to combine data. In a spatial join, we want to differentiate between an input layer and a join layer. The input layer receives the attribute information from the join layer, and the output will be of the same geometry type, meaning point line or polygon, as the input layer. So we've got data on dairies and on watershed sub-basins, and say this is part of a uh, you know, hypothetical situation where we're um, interested in looking at uh, agricultural runoff from dairies and how it might uh, impact watershed sub-basins. So we want to combine the data together. So what we can do is do a spatial join to combine attributes from each of these layers attribute table into a single one. So let's just take a quick look at the attribute table for each of these for the dairies. We see we've got a lot of information about facility size, name of the facility or business, and address information. And if we open up the attribute table for the watershed subbasins, we see information regarding see, the, the area of each subbasin, as well as name, states, or even country that it falls within. We've got Canada here. So, so we want to combine this into a single table. So let's say we want to have we want to maintain point data with the dairies, but we want to know for each individual dairy which watershed subbasin it's in. So we can do that through a spatial join. If we go to our processing toolbox, we can um, either type in join attributes by location, or we can just go to vector general expand that and uh, we see join attributes by location here. So we'll double click on that to open it up. For our input layer, we want the output to be the point data for dairy. So we are going to set that as our input. And to that, we are going to join or specify our join layer as the watershed subbasins. For the geometric predicate, here's where we're defining or uh, specifying the uh, spatial relationship between um, dairies and sub-basins. So I'm going to choose within, so I want to know these dairies, for each individual dairy, which sub-basin does it fall within. For a join type, We've got one to many and one to one here. So we're going to choose one to one. Each dairy only falls within one sub basin. And then we want to scroll down a bit. We can either just leave it to create a temporary layer as an output, um, but I'm going to save this to file and I'm going to call this dairies uh, sub basin. Click save and go ahead and run the algorithm. And go ahead and close this box. And so if we we'll just turn off these two layers here. So we here we have our dairy sub base and our new output here. If we open up the attribute table, we can see we've got all that same information for each of these dairies, facility size, business name, address. If we keep scrolling over on this attribute table, what we see is it's also now we've got the uh, data from the attribute table for the sub basins that's been appended here. 
So we can then tell for a given dairy, I'll just click on this one. If we scroll over, we not only have the information about the dairy itself, but here we also uh, have information about the watershed subbasin in which it falls. Let me close this out. And, but let's say we are interested in having uh, polygons as our output. So we want to maintain the watershed sub-basins, but we want to have information about the dairies that are uh, contained within there. So we can open up joint attributes by location once again, but this time for our input layer, we want to make sure that we have our watershed sub-basins polygon layer selected. And to that, uh, the join layer is going to be Washington Dairies. For a spatial relationship, we want to pick contains. So we want to know um, which of the dairies are contained within each uh, individual sub-basin. For a join type, we're going to do one to many because we can uh, s clearly see from just looking at the map here that for several of these watershed subbasins, there are many or several dairies that fall within each. And then scroll down uh, for joined layer. Again, we cannot specify anything and have a temporary layer created, but I'm going to save this to file and I'll call this subbasins dairies and go ahead and run this algorithm. Okay, we see that the alg algorithms run. Uh, we can see it added to the map here. So we've got our sub-basins dairies. So if we uh, open up the attribute table for this new layer that we created, we notice that we've now got 348 records here as opposed to the 72 that we had in our watershed sub-basins. So what happened here is because of this one-to-many relationship is um, we, these records have been duplicated for those uh, sub-basins that have more than one dairy. And so we can see that when we look just at name, uh, we can see that um, there are several that have been created. So I'll just highlight these three. If we scroll over, you know, we can see uh, all that watershed information is still there. But if we're looking here, we can see business names. So we've got individual dairies are listed here um, for each of these uh, basically duplicated records for the individual watershed sub-basins.